Okay, good. Nice to see you. Uh, today, uh, we're going to talk about something more uh, technical, but it's very important. So there's PTSD, and then there's complex PTSD. So PTSD, and then complex PTSD. So PTSD on the, uh, is when uh, we, we get really bothered by something that we've been through. Just once, like a bad car accident. That we just think about cars and we don't want to even touch them. So that's PTSD. Most people understand PTSD. We're not going to go too much into that. Uh, 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 in, it can be very severe, but it is very different uh, than complex PTSD. And this is a lot of what we treat at NOM is complex PTSD. A lot of our systems are designed to heal the complex PTSD. And, you know, it, generally, I find that uh, behind most addiction, there is a complex PTSD system. And, and, and most, many doctors will say, how can you say that? Or, or psychologists or insurance companies and, and even uh, I get I get challenged. You know how come, you know uh, you're you're treating uh, this thing? What's the evidence? Because it takes a lot of work, time and energy to heal something that's complex. Complex PTSD is basically when you've had a lot of bad things over time, especially between the ages of zero and eleven. So the more you've had over those times. It all adds up, and uh, I, but diagnosing it is tricky, and I'll tell you why. And that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about uh, why it's so hard to pick up this diagnosis in other people and in ourselves. And the reason for this is something that we call the non Realization, big word I know, spectrum. So the non realization spectrum, and so the non realization spectrum. So the way in which we remember things. Uh, People say, oh, I remember this. You know, like in, 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 in uh, you know, uh, two people who argue, right? They say, you did this. And that person says, no, I didn't. You did this. No, I didn't. Lots of arguments like that. So, me kita, nei men me kita. People have different memories about the same thing. <coughs> different, same thing, truth is what happened, but then the memory is the perception of what happened. Jira uh, Hoya, uh, the, the thing that happened, and the memory of the thing that happened are two different things, right? So there's, you know, what happened is A, but then this person looks at it and for them, it's B. This other person look at, and they see C. Different thing. This person, this happened. This person and this person have a different recollection. And guess what? Everyone's uh, probably right in their own way, in their own system. Because memory is not exact. <coughs> how you remember it is not how it happened. I'm going to tell you that right now. How you remember whatever 
is not the whole truth of whatever happened. It's a part of it. And if that thing is overwhelming and, and very disturbing, then you will just remember it in little chunks and you won't remember it very clearly. So, the non-realization spectrum is how do we deal with painful memories? And this is what gets messed up in complex PTSD. So, in complex PTSD, you get, uh, there's generally three strategies of remembering something that's really painful. So the first strategy, pretty common, is called minimization. Minimization, minimization hunda is, is, it happened but it wasn't that bad. But I don't want to talk about it. This comes from Rachel Walker, she did a great job. Something happened, but it wasn't that bad. That's minimization. So, uh, happened, not that bad. You know, yeah, he stole a thousand dollars from me. Yeah, that was all right. Or let's say what actually happened is someone stole a hundred thousand dollars. The minimizer will say, "Oh, he just stole some money. It's okay. It happened, so let it go. Oge so oge." But they don't say what, how much. Because by saying how much, you remember all of it and you don't want to remember it. It hurts. Look at that. In PTSD, you want to avoid. You don't, you don't want to remember. It's stressful. So, you minimize. This is very common in the addiction. Especially in men. But it's common everywhere. So that's actually a mild strategy. That's not too bad. Everyone does that. To some degree with varying things. Then in the medium end of it is what we call derealization. So depersonalization. What is so depersonalization, depersonalization, and derealization. Okay, something bad happened, but it didn't happen to me. It happened to the, my brother. Okay, so something bad happened, but it didn't happen to me. It happened to my brother. Menu koshni hoy. Joda hoya si, kutya si, o mera pranu kutya si ke bala. So there's there's like a there's like a imagination, a changing of the memory to make it more like, yeah, there was abuse, but it didn't happen to me. It happened to that guy. Or it happened. But that wasn't me, so it really didn't happen to me. That's what they call depersonalization. Derealization is, it happened, but it didn't happen like that. There was a lot of yelling, screaming at when I was young. Oh, dad just liked loud Movie, movies. It was really loud all the time. I guess the radio was on. So, 
ਪਰ ਮਨ ਵਿੱਚ ਲੜਾਈ ਝਗੜਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਇਟ ਵਾਸ ਇਟ ਵਾਸ ਟੈਲੀਵਿਜ਼ਨ ਉੱਚੀ ਸੁਣਦੇ ਸੀ ਰਾਈਟ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਯੂ ਡੋਨਟ ਵਾਂਟ ਟੂ ਰਿਮੈਂਬਰ ਥੈਟ ਸੋ ਯੂ ਚੇਂਜ ਇਟ so we call that depersonalization it happened but it didn't happen to me and derealization it happened but it didn't happen like that some modification of the memory system and in any each case don't want to talk about it yeah yeah there's always this loud music at home i don't want to talk about that though let's go somewhere else let's go do something fun aur si kuch vadiya kari hai kyun kari ye prani gala kyun karte and then on the high end is uh, is what we call amnesia so what are you talking about nothing happened kuch hoye vadiya everything was good but i don't like talking about that let's let's have, let's have some fun let's talk about something else don't know what happened but all you know is you just don't like talking between 0 to 11 years old it doesn't feel good but don't know why and don't remember much that's called amnesia and amnesia is incredibly common in complex ptsd depersonalization derealization are very common minimizations everywhere so mild medium severe so when we're coming to the question of why do insurance companies why do uh, uh doctors people that we see why don't they pick up on this because the system in particularly complex ptsd you got to live life ਤਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਜੋਨ ਆ ਪੈਣਾ ਯਾ ਲਾਈਕ ਉਹ ਕਿ ਜੌਬ ਕਨ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਟੂ ਡੂ ਅ ਜੌਬ ਯੂ ਗੋਟ ਟੂ ਵਰਕ ਇਫ ਆਲ ਯੂਰ ਡੇ ਇਜ਼ ਸਪੈਂਡ ਥਿੰਕਿੰਗ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਦ ਪਾਸਟ ਯੂ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਯੂ ਨੋਟ ਗੋਨ ਹੈਵ ਐਨੀ ਫੂਡ ਟੂ ਈਟ ਯੂ ਨੋਟ ਗੋਨ ਬੀ ਅਬਲ ਟੂ ਵਰਕ ਕੁਝ ਹੋਣਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਤੋਂ ਸੋ ਯੂਰ ਸਿਸਟਮ ਜਸਟ ਸਪਰੈਸਸ ਇਟ ਐਂਡ ਫਿਗਰਸ ਆਊਟ ਅ ਵੇ ਟੂ ਮੇਕ ਇਟ ਜਸਟ ਗੋ ਅਵੇ ਦੈਟਸ ਕਾਲਡ ਡਿਸੋਸੀਏਸ਼ਨ just go away so that you can function and in complex ptsd when lots of that's happened lots of that stuff in childhood then these things become then memory itself becomes very unreliable so then you ask somebody anything bad ever happened to you in childhood no doctor it was good and if the doctor is going to spend 5 minutes with you 20 minutes with you they're never going to know they're going to pretend nothing happened or not pretend they from their perspective they're right and so then the issue does not get the attention that it needs so fer othe dhyan nahi janda kisi ne problem da pata nahi lagda so there's no awareness that there's a problem and so then the problem doesn't get any any solution because people like me ask yeah yeah how are things growing up no oh, it was good is it good <laughs> or you just not remember much do you remember stuff but do you not remember the feelings of it do you remember things but is it all changed from what really happened Do you remember stuff but something small made big something big made small in addiction something big usually gets made small 
I read the AA stories from Alcoholics Anonymous. They don't really emphasize childhood, but you can, if you look, read closely, it's very clear that most of the people who have stories, they had a lot of developmental uh, uh, issues. I'm not saying that's what addiction comes from, but I'm saying that's a very important part about why people don't do well in standard addiction treatment programs. So we call this the non-realization spectrum. It's a dissociation strategy to deal with bad memories. And it makes it very hard to pick up on the PTSD. As a doctor, I received one hour of training in PTSD, in all my education. PTSD. We, Psychologists usually have to do extra training, specialized extra training to learn about trauma. These things are not necessarily well known, but a lot of treatment resistant problems, like if you have addiction, but not just addiction, like when, when you know, depression. A lot of treatment, no response, something's wrong, it's usually this, and it's usually a lot of the amnesia stuff. It's a, usually a lot of the, and so if we don't have the right diagnosis, anxiety disorders that don't go away, PTSD that doesn't get better with simple treatment, a lot of these uh, illnesses, personality disorders, a lot of these things that don't get better with, with standard uh, treatments, the only way to diagnose properly is to build a relationship. It's not like I get people telling me on the first time I see them what their diagnosis is. I get to know them slowly over time. And little bits come up, and then eventually it's clear. And so these are the things that, to know. And coming back to why do we care? Because if you're wanting to go to Vancouver, you know, Vancouver's in the west, right? And you're here in Calgary, and then to the east is Winnipeg. And you want to go to Vancouver, right? Are you going to get to Vancouver if you're walking towards Winnipeg? Does he, does he, like, you're going to, does he, get see? You want to go to Vancouver, but you walk towards Winnipeg. Is that going to get you to Vancouver? Trick question. It will get you to Vancouver if you go all the way around the globe. <laughs> Take a couple of, you know, boats and stuff. But it's a lot of work, not going to do it. No, we can do it. Like, if you can cross the border and go to the U.S. and, you know, get to yeah. Vancouver. Hmm? You can cross the border. You know, Winnipeg got a border. Like, you know, you can cross the border and go to the U.S. Yeah. Montana. Like. So there's a lot of, so this is good. There's a lot of ways. Lots of ways. There's a lot of ways, but the thing is, is not all the ways are going to get you there as fast. No. And so I always like to tell people, really get clarity on what your diagnosis really is. If you don't know what your problem is, how are you going to get a solution to that? If you have addiction, if you have some treatment-resistant chronic pain, mental health problem, thing that's messing your life up, and you've done everything you can think of, and it's not getting better, you really have to think what's going on because if you don't have the right idea, you're going to go everywhere. And you're, you're going to spend a lot of time. And the thing is, is 80 people every week are suiciding in Canada. Lots more are overdosing every, every week. So people are dying. And it's not like we have infinite amount of time to walk all the way around the globe take very long roads because you might die on the way. So 
Today, I just wanted to point out that this is why complex PTSD is hidden, is these strategies of, ma of managing the thoughts, minimization, depersonalization, derealization, and amnesia, just not remembering, is a common way to suppress and change things. And one thing that I find, the longer I treat people, the more they remember. One, one person said this to me. She said, I started, Dr. Gill, I started meditating. Now I'm trying to remember things. And that's true. That will happen. That's good. You, your system will start to release what you can handle. Stuff is, if you start doing recovery, you will start to recover memories. It's going to happen. It's not bad. Let your mind process it. Have a system. That's why we teach all these tools. Because as things come up, you need to process them. And the more recovery you do, the more things... Even now, for me, I have memories of things. I was like, oh, that's where that started. Oh, that happened. I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, that thing that happened that was really not that bad. Actually, oh, I was really kind of bothered by it. <clears throat> these are the things that are going to start to happen. And that's a good thing. But you got to be prepared for that. you got to know what's happening. It's your mind. You have every right to know what's in your mind. You can't run away from your mind. Run away, but it goes with you. It's like a shadow. Go here, it's still there. Go there, it's still there. Right? It's always there. Uh, you have to learn to live with it. Become comfortable in it. You can. That's recovery. Recovery is just that. Slowly. The thing about treating complex PTSD is it's slow. And there's a mantra, slow is fast. I think uh, Rachel Walker, uh, she, she introduced me to this. Slow is fast. That's like the opposite of addictive thinking. Addictive thinking is, I want to go fast, go, go, go. Even recovery fast, right? But the mind does not unravel quickly, and if it does, it's not a good thing. Slow is the fastest way. Slow doesn't mean don't do nothing. Slow means go slow. In AA, they say easy does it. Kali Karni, you know, we have a lot of turtles around at Nam. See all the turtles? It's because turtles can go from North America to Europe or to Africa. No turtle. It goes all the way to like Africa. And then it comes back from Africa and remembers where, where eggs were and stuff. Like crazy. Like, like, show did you Do you see any rabbits that go from like North America to, to, to Africa? Rabbits? Do you see any rabbits that go from one city to another? No, they're going to die on the road. All they can do is run fast, get tired, and then when there's no food, they're going to die. A turtle? Step. 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 Swim. Swim. They don't move fast, but they get there. Recovery, be a turtle. Slow and steady. And you'll get there faster. When you go slow and steady, as your system releases information, you'll be able to integrate it. When you go fast, your system will release something and you'll be like, I'm not doing that again, no. And then you stay away from it another 10 years. That's why you go slow, but steady. Doing part, slow and steady. That's why we emphasize daily practice. If you want to go fast in recovery, build your daily practice. Daily part, karna, meditate, karna, yoga, karna, these things, they can help.
So I think that's what I'll say on this. Is uh, uh, and the uh, last thing that maybe I'll just mention is it's not anybody's fault. Nobody, very few people get training on complex PTSD. I've done so many courses and lots of things. It's nobody's fault. Not the family doctor's fault, not the emergency doctor's fault, not the psychologist's fault. People don't know about these things. Society has a lot of it, a lot of people. First responders have complex PTSD. If you have something, you don't want to see it in anybody else, right? So you're going to have to look at it in yourself. It's all subconscious. We all do this. This is the human condition. So, we're just going to try to heal slow. So I wanted to share this in the NAM Academy because it's something that I've been uh, seeing a lot of these days and uh, helping some uh, uh, people through. And, uh, and, and the way to recover, lots of ways. All the videos, you know, there's a hundred plus videos now. Lots of different ways, lots of little bits of information as to how you can get there. There's lots more beyond NAM. Uh, you know, there's many millions of ways. And everything is needed. It takes a village to heal this. It's not just one place like NAM. You know, it takes other uh, professionals. It takes friends. It takes going on a journey, rituals, or, uh, you know, and lots of things. But you can heal it. And when you heal it, your life will be better than you've ever known. Because you have no idea how much energy goes into suppressing and modifying memories and keeping it stuck. It's a lot of energy. It'll push you into a brain fog, how much energy goes into this. So it's worth it. If you go slow, steady, it's worth it. So uh, I think that's what we'll say today. So thank you. Thank you uh, any questions, much. comments? Question, comment. Okay, thank you.